Today on the show, we'll get into Turkey Night at Ventura, plus Sheldon Huddenshield talks money, high limit, and more. Let's go. It's Monday, November 28th. I'm Justin Fiedler. This is Dirt Tracker Daily. Hope you had a good Thanksgiving weekend, had a couple of days off to kind of rest and recharge. After a few days off myself, uh, I've got a bunch of stuff to get into today, so we'll just jump right in. And we'll start first with USAC out in California. Going back to Merced last Wednesday night, Buddy Kofoid got by race long leader Spencer Basin with five to go and drove off to his 13th win of the season. The moment of the night, though, was probably Michael Pickens' flip in qualifying where he went over, landed on all four wheels, and then just kept driving. It's not something you see very often, especially with how easily parts break when that much force is applied to them. Pickens is a wheelman, though, uh, and it's not surprising that it was him behind the wheel and recovering from that. And if you saw the onboard video, uh, it looked like Pickens was in a washing machine as that thing was spinning over and over before a landing on all four wheels. Uh, the night's sprint car feature there at Merced was entertaining as well, with Chase Randall eventually coming out on top over Justin Sanders. We had a fun battle for the lead between Dominic Selzy and Carson Macedo in that one, uh, but both of those guys had issues and ended up out of contention. After having Thursday off, uh, the USAC teams moved over to Ventura Raceway on Friday to begin Turkey Night Prep. And if you were around on social media over those couple of days, there were quite a few complaints about the track at Ventura and how narrow it's now become. Lots of drivers and other folks were kind of pining for things to return to the glory days of facility, but honestly, you thought the midget show on Saturday night was pretty good. I don't have a long personal history with Ventura, so maybe it was better in the past, uh, but five lead changes among five different drivers in the main event, I think a lot of action is tough to complain about. Definitely didn't pay to be out front in that uh, midget feature, though. Three drivers uh, that led in there of the five ended up finishing 19th or worse. Buddy Kofoid led the first 44 laps, but he went for a tumble down the backstretch with 31 laps to go when Tanner Thorson got crossed up on the cushion, and Buddy literally had nowhere to go. That ended his season. Kenan McIntosh and Carson Macedo also led laps, uh, also both led laps, but were both victims of that same cushion while leading. And Thorson led briefly as well, but he was involved in a couple of incidents uh, late in that race, including a late spin. In the end, it was Justin Grant who survived to bag the Turkey Night victory over a hard-charging Kyle Larson and Bryant Wiedemann. Larson was a late entrant to the event in a Chad boat car, and he drove up to second after starting 22nd. He drew the ire, though, of Kevin Thomas Jr. after the checkered flag, as KTJ was none too pleased uh, after a late move from Young Money that included contact and then shuffled uh, the 5T down the order. Solid end, though, to the season for the USAC National Midgets, and again, Buddy Kofoid is your series champion for the second straight year. If you're a midget fan, uh, they are not part of racing at the Dome this season. Uh, the Dome is coming up this weekend, but they will be indoors at DuCoin coming up uh, later in December with Power Eye. Uh, and then after that, obviously, we'll be into Chili Bowl. So lots of midget stuff still to come. A lot of talk still to come as well. If you want some Dirt Tracker merch at a discount, today is the final day to take advantage of that kind of Black Friday, Cyber Monday sale I've been running all weekend. Everything in the shop is marked down, including the hats, shirts, and decals. Some stuff is as much as 50% off, uh, and I'm still covering sales tax and shipping for those of you in the U.S. I am down to just a few pieces in stock on some items, so it's possible we could have some of them sell out today. Head over to shop.dirttracker.com to grab something now before the day is over. Uh, starting Tuesday, everything will be back to normal prices. Uh, as we continue to wait and see how things will play out with the Word of Outlaws, their schedule, the Platinum Agreement, what, uh, what the teams will do in 2023, we had more public comments over the weekend to dive into. Toby Bellbowen and Sprint Car Hub on YouTube posted an interview with Sheldon Hoddenshield, and they covered a lot of these topics, including money, the High Limit series, and a bunch more. I tweeted yesterday about it a little bit after I watched it because Toby used the term guaranteed money in his thumbnail as it was something Sheldon mentioned in their chat. This idea that there is no guaranteed money in sprinkler racing, as for the most part, pay is performance-based. Obviously, you have to run well to get paid. Uh, the idea of guaranteed money is sort of true and sort of not true, uh, at least for uh, you know full-time members of a national tour. When you sign up for a series like the Ward of Outlaws, we'll get things like tow money and the points fund, so on some level, there is something that's guaranteed. But the idea of guaranteed money in dirt racing is an interesting topic, which is why I tweeted about it. Guarantees are a big deal right now, just kind of across the sports landscape with athletes wanting more and more guaranteed money. And that's a big reason why we've seen the split in the golf world between the PJ Tour and Live. Live is offering those guys big cash regardless of how they play, whereas the PJ Tour is much more performance based. In dirt racing, though, I'm not sure how guaranteed money could even work as the series and the teams are completely separate entities. 
Drivers are not employees of the series, whereas with sports leagues, the leagues are owned by the team owners. It's an interesting thought experiment, though, either way. But I think, though, after my tweet, I think Sheldon took offense to what I said because he replied saying he was not asking for guaranteed money, only pointing out that it doesn't exist. And he's correct. He did not ask for it. Uh, and I didn't say that he did, but it's not a huge leap to make that as soon as it starts entering the conversations, that the ask is probably not too far away. On some level, though, I hope that dirt racing stays performance-based. Run well, get paid well. Don't run well, get paid less. It's simple. It's effective. There were quite a few other points in there to talk about as well. Sheldon was very non-committal about the team's plans for next season, saying they were going to wait on the Word of Outlaws schedule and the agreement before deciding. If there are going to be teams defecting from the series, I believe that the NOS 17 squad is one of the more likely teams to split. They've got solid backing from NOS Energy Drink. The team is well supported by its owners and Sheldon's merch sales are substantial and continue, uh, can continue to support his career. They would be giving up sub, uh, a substantial amount of money to do so though, between the points fund and tow and bonus money. But I think they could absorb the blow and Sheldon will still win a lot of races regardless of where they are. And you would still see them at a lot of World of Outlaws races anyway. For some context, uh, when it comes uh, to money, the series posted that the 17 car made $504,525 during the 2022 season. 65,000 of that was the points payout and another about 370,000 was race winning. So that leaves about another $68,000 from the tow and bonus money program. If Sheldon is getting 40% or 50% of earnings, we can figure he was somewhere around $200,000 in earnings for 2022 from the racing itself. That doesn't include merch sales, obviously doesn't include any expenses that he has along the way. When asked about an ideal scenario for the series schedule, he mentioned a 90 race slate, which is obviously about what they have now, uh, but with races paying at minimum 20,000 to win, and that would be incredibly enticing for him. And I'm sure that's true. But even as WRG continues to add money to the series, I wouldn't my whole, uh, hold my breath thinking that to win amounts would double overnight. You know, to go from 10,000 to 20,000 this year, next year, I think is, uh, is a little unrealistic. Toby also asked Sheldon about racing elsewhere as a full-time outlaw driver, and he compared it to NASCAR, allowing their drivers to run other stuff. And I certainly see his point, but it's not exactly an apples-to-apples -apples comparison. When Larson or Kyle Busch or Alex Bowman or whoever else go run other events, they are not running cup cars for a competing series or event. A dirt race or a pavement late model race don't affect NASCAR's business. That's not the case uh, with what we're talking about here in sprint car racing. And the outlaws don't view things that way here. And I'm also curious about the numbers that the drivers and teams believe to be true for, uh, for streaming. In a lot of these conversations, we keep hearing that things, quote, you know, kind of don't add up. And I know it won't happen, but it would be great to hear what they think is happening with the streaming. You've got the drivers insinuating that a lot of money is being made. And then Brian Carter saying it's not as much as they think. And I think that's also an important point to make here as well. As we hear publicly from both sides, they each have their own agendas. And remember that the real truth probably lies somewhere in between what both sides are saying. If you want to check out the Sheldon interview, and I would encourage you to do so, go find, this, uh, go find Sprint Car Hub on YouTube, and I'll link to the video in the description below. Uh, if you're a gamer or a fan of the iRacing Pro Series, and I know so many of you out there are, the World of Outlaws Sprint Cars are back tonight for another season. They'll kick off the year at 9 p.m. Eastern live on Dirt Vision and on YouTube. The iRacing competitors have spent the last few weeks working their way through the qualifying series, and the championship run begins tonight with racing at Volusia Speedway Park. Uh, don't forget these races are free to watch. We will recap uh, tonight's racing on tomorrow's episode. Uh, on tomorrow's show, I got a bunch of news tid uh, tidbits to talk about, including some stuff that's already broken today. Uh, so if there's something I haven't gotten to, odds are it will be on tomorrow's daily show. And we'll run through kind of all of those things that have happened over the last week or so and, uh, and all of the stuff that's happened today. Because there's been quite a few things that have broken today as well. Uh, there are three items on the streaming schedule for this Monday. Dirt Vision has the iRacing World of Outlaws and Dirt Vision now. There's also Flow Racing 24-7. To see the full uh, daily streaming schedule with links to watch, visit dirttracker.com slash watch tonight. That's it for the show today. Have a good Monday. Please hit that like button and subscribe to the show if you don't do so already. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow for more Dirt Tracker Daily.